begin the ninth lecture on the prison epistles. Today we will study Philippians chapter 2. The title is Imitating Christ. The following are the main points of this lecture. First, help others with humility, verses 1 through 4. Second, have the same mindset as Jesus, verses 5 through 8. Third, God exalts those who have the same mindset as Jesus, verses 9 through 11. Fourth, work out your salvation, verses 12 through 18. Fifth, Two people with the mindset of Jesus, verses 19 through 30. 1. Timothy, verses 19 through 24. 2. Epaphroditus, verses 25 through 30. Now on to the first point, help others with humility, verses 1 through 4. Read verse 1. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion. It is important that we encourage and comfort one another in the church. Communication with the Holy Spirit and showing pity and compassion to others is also very important. These benefit each member of the church and the church itself. A brother's sin should not be handled only with rebuke. Love and compassion are necessary as well. When our brother is weak and cannot stand up, we must encourage him with open hearts. That is how the law of love and Christ are fulfilled. Whenever a brother is tempted, we must encourage him with loving hearts. We must also lead him to God so that he would live properly before God by serving the church. Verse 2 Then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. It says being like-minded. It also says having the same love. It also says being one in spirit and purpose. When we get rid of our selfish desires in the gospel and the truth and sacrifice ourselves, we can be like-minded. We can be of one mind when we get rid of our selfishness and have a heart for the church. It also says having the same love. When we love Jesus and the church, then we all can be of one mind. Whoever truly loves Jesus will love the church, which is the body of Christ. He will also actively participate in church works. All members of the church should have the same love. It also says being one in spirit. We can be one in spirit 
when we put away our will and go forward in God's will, and when we put away our thoughts and build up the truth. Therefore, we must reach the place where we can do the will of Jesus Christ and of God. When all believers abandon their own wills and pursue and obey God's will, then we can be of one spirit. It also says, being of one mind. Each of us have different minds. Yet, when we put ourselves aside and have the heart of Christ, we can be of one mind. This is written in verses 5 through 10. Verses 5 through 10 talk about the heart of Christ. Verse 3 Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Even if a believer does the works of God, he is to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, as it is written in the verse. We must get rid of selfish ambition or vain conceit, and in humility consider others better than ourselves. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 3, we read about the speck of sawdust in our brother's eye and the plank in our own eyes. The faults of our brothers are small like specks of dust. These are outward mistakes and sins that we can see. However, there is corruption within people which we cannot see. This is compared to planks. We cannot look into people's inner thoughts. All we can see are the mistakes and sins that are seen externally. If we were to compare them to the corruption within us, those mistakes would be very small. This is the reason why we must examine ourselves before we attempt to expose other people's faults. We will be humbled once we realize how depraved we are. The prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah humbled themselves before God when they discovered God. We must always be humble. Verse 4 Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. We must first look to our own interests. We must have the mindset to be responsible for our works. Someone will help me. We must not depend on others, but we must take responsibility for our own works. Not only that, but the verse tells us to look to the interests of others. This is the law of Christ, the law of love. God is pleased with those who help others in need 
and he blesses those who do so. It says that the highest in heaven are those who served others most. This is why those who help others are more blessed than those who are being helped. As a joke, it is said that spoons are long in heaven. Because spoons are so long, one cannot feed himself with a spoon. Hence, the people feed each other. Those who served most are the greatest in heaven. Let us be humble and help others. Second, have the same mindset as Jesus. Verses 5 through 8. It says in verse 5, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. What is the mindset of Jesus? It is humility. It is serving others. It is obedience to God. Verses 6 through 8. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross. We can see the mindset that Jesus had. First, in verses 6 through 8, it says, Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. First, Jesus became low, and abandoned the glorious throne of God. This means that if we want to have the same mindset as Jesus, we must abandon our pride and desire for honor. Just as Jesus let go of the glorious place, we must be humble if we want the mindset of Jesus. It says in the verse, made himself nothing. This refers to the state of having nothing. This is an empty heart, a poor heart, and the state of having nothing. We can say that becoming like a child is to have the heart of Jesus. What is the mindset of Jesus? Second, Jesus took on the nature of a servant. This does not mean that Jesus simply called himself a servant but he truly became a servant. Thus, when we say that we have the mindset of Jesus, it means that we have truly become a servant. Jesus said that he did not come to be served, but to serve. Also, the greatest in heaven are those who served most. What else is the mindset of Jesus? Third, it is to become low. The Creator, Jesus Christ, became low when He took on the body of a man. There was a swineherd. He was an excellent swineherd. One day, someone asked him, 
How do you tend your pigs so well? Then the swineherd answered, When the pigs are cold, I am cold. And when the pigs are hungry, I must be hungry as well. The man had the mindset of pigs. He knew when the pigs would be cold and knew when the pigs would be hungry, and therefore he was able to tend his pigs well. Here a man became like a pig, and he became very low. However, Jesus Christ took on the appearance of man, which means he was lowered far more than the man who became like a pig. Jesus was sinless. But he took up our sins and redeemed us on the cross. Our Lord lowered himself and obeyed to the point of death on the cross. We must become low if we want to have the mindset of Jesus. Fourth, Concerning the mindset of Jesus, he obeyed until death on a cross. Jesus obeyed to the point of death so that he would obey God's will. He knew God's will and his calling, and then he died to obey God's will. Jesus obeyed and fulfilled God's will. We believers must also have the mindset of Jesus, who obeyed to the point of death to fulfill God's will. Now let us move on to the third point. God exalts those who have the same mindset as Jesus. Verses 9 through 11. When we have the same mindset as Jesus, God exalts us as he exalted Jesus. God will exalt us like Jesus when we have the same mindset as Jesus. How did God exalt Jesus? Verse 9, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. God will exalt us just as Joseph became prime minister of Egypt. Second, it says that every knee will bow down before Jesus. In this way, every knee will bow before all those who have the same mindset as Jesus. It is the same as when all the officials bowed down before Joseph when he became prime minister. Third, all tongues will acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Lord. For example, when Joseph became prime minister, all the people had no choice but to kneel before him. However, everyone will voluntarily come to kneel before Jesus. How excellent was Joseph in politics! Though people were forced to kneel before him at first, Everyone knelt before him with good hearts 
when they saw his virtue. Then God the Father was glorified. In the same way, God exalts those who have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. All knees will come and bow before Jesus. Just as every tongue later acknowledged Jesus as the Lord with joy, all knees will bow before him. In other words, God's works will go well and God will be glorified. We must have the same mindset as Jesus and be humble. When we do so, God's works will be well. Fourth main point, work out your salvation. Verses 12 through 18. Verse 12, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Working hard only when a leader is watching and being lazy when the leader is absent shows one's lack of maturity in faith. When one claims that he had good faith when he had a good leader and says that he has bad faith because he now does not have a good leader, he is not upright in his faith. Therefore, we must have faith before God. It says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Salvation refers to deliverance from sin. What does work out your salvation mean? It refers to our state of gradual deliverance from sin. Whoever believed in Jesus Christ was forgiven of his sins the moment he believed. He was legally saved. His spirit was reborn. However, the flesh is still in sin. That is why we must put off the corrupted natures of our flesh. Our born-again souls grow gradually. At first, we were like a child, but we grew mature as we ate solid food. Even if a newborn baby is covered in blood, the baby still is a human being. If people believed in Jesus and have been reborn, they are still alive even though they may be childlike in their faith. However, they drink milk because they are like infants. Therefore, we grow as we begin to eat solid food. We are slowly made into God's people as we gradually get rid of our depraved natures. The born-again spirit gradually grows. This is what it means to work out our salvation. Work out your salvation means to become more and more like Christ. 
when we believers go to heaven, we will go in the state our souls had grown to. Those who believed well and grew will become the greatest in heaven. There are great ones and little ones in heaven. Those whose souls have not grown are like children. Let us say that there was a rich family with a younger son and an elder son. The children did not lack anything because they were born into a rich family. However, can the younger son drive around in a car? The boy is happy even if he drinks milk. The grown son would be able to drive a car and do a lot of other things. There is a difference in what the younger son and the grown son can enjoy. Even in heaven, there is a difference in what the great ones can enjoy and what the little ones can enjoy. There is a difference in the rewards. Therefore, we must have faith and grow in our faith. Verse 13, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. God works in us. God holds us, leads us, and works in us. When we obey His guidance, we can work out our salvation. We must obey. Because God works in us, we obey His will. We must not be led by our stubbornness or thoughts. Instead, we must obey the guidance of God and His Word. Even if we are faced with tribulations and face harm, and even if we are going to die, we must still obey God's word and His will. That is to succeed, even if we are beaten as a result of it. Even when we die, we will have lived a successful life because we obeyed God's will. It also says, to will and to act according to His good purpose. God wants us believers to work out our salvation. God gives us the strength to do so. We must understand this, and when God moves our hearts, we must be able to obey. Verse 14 Do everything without complaining or arguing. Complaining hearts and arguing hearts all belong to Satan. These harm us and others. There are four sins that led to the destruction of the Israelites in the wilderness. They are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, it talks about the grumbling hearts they had towards God. 
they grumbled against Moses, which was to grumble against God. Their grumbling hearts led to their destruction. They were sexually immoral and were destroyed. They tested God, and they were destroyed. Their idolatry led them to destruction. In the church today, we must strive so that we do not have grumbling or arguing hearts. In order for that to happen, we must. Do what the Bible says. Not everything can go according to our will. Even if it does, we must strive to fulfill God's will first. Verse fifteen, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault. In a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe, this world is crooked and depraved. It rebels against God. Therefore, if a believer chooses to follow the world, his faith. Will eventually become corrupted. This is because the world is at rebellion against God. What this means is that we will be persecuted as we try to live according to the Bible. However, as we obey God's word. In the midst of persecutions, our light will surely shine. The world insults us that we are special, as we try to hold on to our faith. However, when they see us overcome troubles and persecutions, the light will shine. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego entered the furnace. Yet when they came out, they received more glory than before. We are the light of this world. We shine in the world when we hold on to our faith. Verse sixteen. As you hold out the word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. It says the word of life. This refers to the Bible. Our souls live when we take the Bible. And enter into the world of truth. The word gives life. Therefore, it is important that we evangelize, build up the church, and share the truth. We cannot shine the word of life if we do not stand in the truth. The light of the truth can shine when those who know the truth build up the church. Then nothing will have been done in vain. There will be many things to boast about at the second coming of Christ. There will be things to boast about. At Jesus's return, if we obeyed God's word and kept our faith, a mother told her children, 
I am going out for a while. Have fun with each other until I come back. And she went out. If the children had a good time and cleaned their rooms, they would want their mother to come home soon. Then, when she comes home, each of them would boast of their work. In the same way, when we hold firmly to the word of truth. And keep our faith. Each of us will boast of one another at the Lord's return. It says in verses seventeen through eighteen that the believers of Philippi held on to their faith. They gave offerings of faith and served with eagerness. Paul said that he would still be glad, even if he was poured out like a drink offering. A drink offering is a sacrifice that is poured out. This symbolizes Paul's mindset as a martyr. Paul meant. That he would rejoice even if he died at the place like a drink offering. Paul cherished the Philippi believers' strong faith as if it was his life. There were two people who had the same mindset as Jesus. The first person was Timothy, and the other was Epaphroditus. What was Timothy like? As we can see in verse nineteen, Paul was imprisoned in Rome. The believers of Philippi prayed for Paul. And they were worried about him. Thus, Paul decided to send Timothy to find out how they were doing. We can see here that Paul loved them very much. We can see in verse twenty that Paul sent Timothy. To let his will be known to them, and to find out how they were doing. The only person Paul thought was suitable for the job was Timothy. Timothy was a leader in the church, and we should be like him today. Pastors must show genuine concern for the members of the church. What was Timothy like? It says that Timothy looked out for the interest of Jesus Christ, while everyone looked out for his own. There are many pastors. Who look out for their own interests? For them, their interests come first, while God's interest comes next. They are hypocritical pastors. We, on the other hand, must be like Timothy and John the Baptist. And Christ should be more, and we be less. And the church should be more, while we become less. It is wicked to harm the church and cover the glory of God for one's self-benefit. 
In verse 22, we can see that Timothy was also persecuted. Also, Timothy served Paul like a father and worked until the end for the gospel. Timothy served like a servant. Verses 23 through 24. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me, and I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. From verse 25, Paul talks about Epaphroditus. Paul was going to send Timothy first, but plans changed and he sent Epaphroditus first. What was Epaphroditus like? He was a fellow worker, a fellow soldier, and one who was sent to take care of Paul's needs. The gifts of the Philippi believers were sent through him. However, in verse 26, Epaphroditus became ill. Paul was worried that the church of Philippi would be worried to hear the news. In the same way, whenever we are sick, or have done something wrong, we must be worried that it would cause other believers to become anxious. Of course, members of the church must serve their pastors. Therefore, pastors must know the situations of believers and they must make sure that they do not make believers anxious. As written in verse 26, Epaphroditus became well. God showed him mercy. God also showed mercy to Paul. This was because Epaphroditus became sick while he was helping Paul. Paul was sorry and was worried for him. God heard Paul's prayer and made Epaphroditus well, and Paul's worries were gone. Hence, he first sent Epaphroditus. As is written in verse 28, his recovery was joy for the church of Philippi. It also comforted them. This was why Paul first sent him immediately. Also in verse 29, it says, honor men like him. We must honor God's servants as well. We must also honor those like him. Verse 30, because he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. This verse is the reason why Paul told the believers to honor Epaphroditus. He almost died in illness. He risked his life for the work of Christ. Paul taught them to honor those like him. We must honor God's servants. With this, we will conclude the ninth lecture on the prison epistles. 
Thank you very much.